Hi guys, welcome to Tulip class. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to navigate in Blender and how to use some basic tools and useful keyboard shortcuts. Okay, let's get started. When you first open Blender, you'll see a menu right away asking what type of new file you want to open. Click General to proceed. The main page you see is the 3D viewport and you can consider this your workspace for your objects. Let's set up Blender by adjusting some settings. Let's go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons. Let's look for Loop. Make sure this box is ticked, Mesh Loop Tools. This will be very useful when selecting edges in loops. Then go to save and load. Make sure auto save is ticked. Let's adjust the timer to 10 or 15 minutes. This is the time frame in minutes Blender auto saves, but two minutes is too short and it may be lagging. So we'll change that. And when you need to retrieve something from auto save, go to file. Recover and autosave. And you'll see the recently saved autosave files here. But let's try to make a habit of saving Control S constantly. This is so important if you don't want to lose your precious works. Let's come back to the 3D viewport. What you see on the top right corner is an outliner. It's a list that organizes data or things like objects, camera, lights, what's in the Blender file. Things that you see in the scene or this 3D viewport is also shown in the list. You can select from the outliner or also from the 3D viewport. You can click on this eye button to hide or show. And down here is what's called the properties editor. It shows and allows editing of many active data and we'll get to use these panels when assigning materials and rigging or weight transferring. I just activated a screencast key here down on the left corner so you can see what keyboard shortcuts I just used or which mouse button I used. Hopefully this will be helpful for you. Next, in the 3D viewport, let's do mouse wheel, click and move. This moves and rotates the camera view. Now shift and wheel click moves the screen. Can you tell the difference? So this is just wheel click and rotating. And then shift click is the whole screen moving. Scroll up and down for zoom in and out. Left mouse button to select. Right mouse button for pop-up option menus. Letter N to view or hide the menu on the right. This menu we'll be using when setting up scale and rotation for our model. Letter T to view or hide tools on the left. These tools for selection box options. And let's go to viewport overlays up here. Tick statistics. We'll be needing it to check the triangles when we build our models. Click and drag from the window corners here. You see this little plus sign. Can you see it? Click and drag to split the windows. This is especially helpful when unmapping UV and displaying different editors. So in this corner, you can decide what you want to see in this window. And we would usually use UV editor to do UV mapping. Click back in the corner, drag left or right to close the window. Here are some useful viewpoint short keys. When you want to snap view to front, number pad 1. This has to be the 10 key number pad number 1 on your keyboard on the right side. 
not the ones on top of the letters horizontally, not below F1, F2, F3. Control 1 to view the back, 3 to view right, Control 3 to view left, 7 for top, Control 7 for bottom. Let's go over the different interaction mode. Go to the top left corner. We'll be dealing with most of these different modes, but mainly we'll be toggling between object mode and edit mode. Tab key to easily toggle between object mode and edit mode. In object mode, we can select an object, move, rotate, and scale. Keyboard shortcut G to move, rotate, R to rotate, and S to scale. We'll also bind Zepetto avatar bones to your item and reconfigure the structures in the outliner in object mode. So when modifying in a larger unit in object unit, we need to be in object mode. In edit mode, you can change the shapes of your object like this. And there are three selection types. First one, vertex select, edge select, and then face select. You can toggle between these three by pressing one, two, and three. And this time it's the numbers on top of the letters on your keyboard. One, two, and three. So when you're in vertex select, you can select these little dots called vertex. And edges, you can select the edges in edge select mode. And face select mode, you can select faces. Now let's delete all the objects in our scene. You can just drag select or A for all and delete with the delete button or in Blender, hotkey for delete is X and delete. Then let's import the Zepetto avatar body base called a mask object, the bones of our avatar called creator base set. These are both FBX files. This file format is one of many different file formats used in 3D modeling and graphic design programs like Maya, 3D Max, and of course, Blender. Go to File, Import, FBX. Find the location of your downloaded file. Mask object, double click. You have to import one at a time. So again, file, import, FBX. Now the creator base set. To center the view on the object, select the object that you want to zoom in on and press numpad dot. You can see now that you have imported mask and the creator base set. These two files are necessary every time you make your item. So instead of importing these every time, what I do is I created a default file with my preferred setting. And I always open this default file and start building items from there. Let's make your own default file right now. Go to the outliner. Click on the arrow icon next to Zepetto Creator Base Set and it'll show you the drop down menu. Change the name of mask.001 to just double click on it and you'll be able to edit it. Mask underscore skin underscore male. We changed the name of this one so we don't get confused with the mask object that's over here. We name it mask skin because this model has weight value applied that we'll use to transfer to our own item later on, whereas this mask object does not have any weight. What I mean is, this mask skin object that we just renamed has weight value already applied, but this mask 
does not have any weight. And please do not change the name of this mask object. Always leave it as mask in lowercase. This may cause your item to get rejected. Then split the window into two. Go to editor type. Select UV editor. Turn on statistics if you haven't done already. And this will be your base setup file. If you find something that you use all the time and you'd like to add it to your base file, always update it as needed. And in case you're having trouble importing FBX files or with anything, I've shared my default file on our Discord channel with a little surprise in it. So check it out and make it your own. I hope I didn't lose you along the way. It may seem overwhelming now, but don't worry. Think of this first tutorial as an overview and I'll repeatedly go over the shortcuts and functions as we create our items. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in our week one mission tutorial. Bye!